What is going on, Cinema Lovers? We are Cinema Squad, coming at you with our latest podcast, and we kind of took off like a month or so, uh, so we're we're back now. We're back in full speed. We're talking like Lightning McQueen speed. You're getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to go. Okay, I am here with my series regulars, Darren. I mean, our, fuck, I never know what to say there. All my series regulars. <laughs> No, Darren, how are you doing? I'm 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 pretty good. My my name was followed by fuck, so um, I'm done I'm done great. <laughs> Miller, how are you doing? Good. Will, how are you doing? Great. Tisha, you sounded kind of disappointed before we started this. Are you doing okay? I'm fine. Okay then. Anyways, we are going to get started, and we're going to start off with some Deadpool news. What you've all been waiting for, we finally got a director for Deadpool 2 after Tim Miller left, and it is, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'm going to do my best, David Leitch. I think that's how you say his last name. Um, He's going to direct Deadpool 2. I think the only directing credit he has is he co-directed John Wick. So... I'm personally excited. I wanted Quentin Tarantino. I knew that wasn't going to happen, but I wanted it anyways. Um, but I am personally excited. Darren, what are you thinking? I love this news. Um, I I won't say it. Okay, love is probably too strong. I'm very excited about this news because mostly I like what he – he just got off of doing a film, The Coda City, with oh. Charlize Theron and James McAvoy and John Goodman. It's going to be released next year. I'm really excited for that one. That's more of a spy theater th- thriller. And But what I'm most excited about this film, because I'm pretty sure the sense of humor and everything is still going to be there. We still have the same writers and everything. I'm just excited. How is this film going to look? How is the action going to be? Because the action in John Wick, and I'm just going off of what he... Yeah, it was, a fu- it was fucking amazing. But just compared to Deadpool, it's not really the same. And, um, you know, that one's a little bit more grounded and, you know, a little bit more human. If You know, because Dead, Deadpool is very flippy, superhuman. And I just want to see how that's going, how he's going to translate and what his eye for Deadpool's action is going to be now. Because even if Deadpool is doing some more John Wick stuff, that's that's very exciting. Because if we did get to see, um, if we do get to see uh, Deadpool go that route. But, you know, this guy's also a stuntman. You know, he could get inside of the Deadpool suit if he if he you know chose to so yeah that would be awesome so i mean i can't wait to see just how how are the action scenes going to look that is what i'm really most excited about um this news going forward but yeah i'm looking forward to what he can do with this and i'm glad that you know they have a director now so we can start going forward now um no one's really talked about this but i personally would have rather had chad stahelski come along with him what do you think I mean, I would have rather had um, both of these guys doing um, uh, John Wick too, but I'm, I'm, yeah. but I believe that both of these guys, you know, they've worked together very well. Um, David Leach is still producing John Wick too, so um, you know they they work together very well. They probably call each other up, you know, give each other ideas. So um, yeah, I'm, I I think they both of these guys are very talented on their own. I, I, if they weren't, I don't think um, the other director I'm forgetting his name at the moment. Um, I think he, yeah, thank you. Chad Stahelski, he, uh, he's still doing John Wick on his own, and this guy went off to do the Code of City. So I think they're still very talented. I would, I, as you said, I would have liked that if they came along, t- came along together. But you know, I think it's still going to work out. Uh, to Chad Stahelski and uh, David Leitch uh, were actually, if Ben Affleck didn't direct the Batman movie, they were actually my choices to to direct it. But. Um, uh, that Miller, was interesting. What do you uh, what do you think of David Leitch directing Deadpool two? Um, cool. <laughs> I mean, hopefully it's a lot better movie than Deadpool was with him. And I think the style. I mean, I know he's a co director on John Wick, but I think the style that that movie has could work really well for Deadpool. So I'm all for it. Uh, Tisha, what do you think? Um, I don't really know the director. I'm just kind of excited to see what they can do with Deadpool 2. Um, I, it's going to be really hard to follow that up because it was such a unique style the first time. And if they try to do exactly the same thing that they did before, it might become a little stale and a little forced as opposed to how natural and funny it was originally. So this director is going to have to really step up. 
Miller didn't really find it that funny, but okay. I found it funny, I just, that story sucked. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, the fourth wall breaking, you know, it's funny the first time, and I get that that's what he does in the comics and everything, and, you know, I, I, I definitely get that, but it, you know, there's only only so many times you can use that joke, and after a while it did get a little old, so, you know, they, they really have to work on what their, uh, what they want to do, in my opinion. Oh, I'm sorry, were you saying something? No, it's okay. Oh, okay, okay. Will, what do you think? Uh, I think he'll do a fine job. I mean, this is something that is not very uh, in keeping with what he's done before. I mean, John Wick does have its fair share of action and stuff, but Deadpool is something completely different. But I think that's a good thing because I think that uh, he would be able to do a good job of staying – within the bounds that Tim Miller already created on the first one while still, you know, as, as an artist being able to do his own thing with the material. But, um, I, I like this better than somebody like Quentin Tarantino because Quentin Tarantino, even though I love him as a director and even though it, if they'd have announced Quentin Tarantino was directing the first Deadpool movie, I would have been on board, but Deadpool is not exactly, um, it's not exactly what Tarantino does, really. And uh, I feel like Tarantino is such a well-known director and well-known for his unique style that he would have to put his stamp on Deadpool, and I, I don't really want to see that. I want to see a director that can, uh, you know, do his own thing with Deadpool, but also realize that this isn't his movie this is Deadpool's movie and it has to stay Deadpool's movie and it also has to at least be a little bit familiar with what was done in the first one mm -hmm. and uh, I think David Leach could do that now that we're on the topic of Deadpool I kind of wanted, I kind of wanted to ask you guys a question because I had someone in mind um, if Ryan Reynolds had, had never did Deadpool and was never cast Deadpool who would you guys have liked to see Tisha go <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, you come back to me. <laughs> All right, Dylan. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, we will. Yeah, I think this is a really pointless question because nobody could do it the way that Ryan did it. Ryan made it his own, and I, it, it's honestly, it's impossible to see anybody else in that role. I mean... I would have actually liked to see Sam Rockwell, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be horrible. You're horrible. If he was younger, John. <laughs> Sorry, I think that would be. I think that would have been a terrible idea. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. we'll, we'll just move on. So whatever. Um, <laughs> I'll, I just sense. have one more one more thing to say about uh, David um, David Leach and um, uh, sorry, Chats Leslie, right? Um, yeah. yeah, they were both second unit directors on Civil War. They directed most of the action. So that's another thing, and they were also second. Um, Chad and him, um, just variety. They were also second unit directors on Jurassic World, True Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Wolverine, and other things. So they 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 do know their way around that camera and around the set. So I did not yeah. know they were second unit directors on um, Civil War. I knew they were stuntmen on The Matrix, but I didn't know anything about Civil yeah. War. But that's cool. Yeah, um, the Russos called them up. Just the Russos called them up, and you're just like, "Look, we're doing new action. Can you come along?" So, mm. anyways, moving on, uh, we got a huge announcement the other day from Marvel. Uh, I never saw this coming. Maybe some of you did. I don't know. I, but the Inhumans is actually being turned into a TV show and movie. I don't think it's going to happen anymore. Um. But uh, the, the TV show is set to premiere uh, next fall, and its first two episodes will actually be screened in IMAX. Um, no word yet on who will be playing who or directors or anything like that or showrunners. All we know is that The Inhumans is going to be a TV show instead of a movie. So, Miller, what do you think of that? I think it's cool. I think it's interesting they're doing the whole IMAX thing, and I think the whole... When I saw it, I saw that it was going to be eight episodes. Does that mean for the whole series or just the first season? We don't even know if it's going to be two. This is just it's just eight episodes for the yeah. first season. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so that's smart because you don't want to go like uh, too 
have too much or yeah you just don't want to it's better to have when a tv show has less episodes because that means they can just have a tighter narrative so i think it'll turn out well okay uh will what do you think uh well i mean i really didn't give a hoot about an inhumans tv series and i still really don't um but uh, the fact that they're putting it in an imax that they're giving it an imax theatrical um event uh that that has me at least a little bit curious so i'll definitely go see that and then i'll judge from that whether or not i have any interest in the show um but i really i I mean i just i have no interest in the inhumans i i really have no interest in the way they're being done on agents of shield and yeah i to me they're just the poor man's x-men and uh i'm not about that life so (laughs) tisha what do you think I, this is one of those things that I, I don't know anything about it. So, um, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'll, I'll just move. On. I, I, I hope that it does well because I want everyone to succeed, but not everyone can. So, <laughs> yeah. Darren, I, I, I haven't gone to you, right? No, no, you haven't. All right. Yeah. Okay. Darren. Okay. Um, I'm kind of actually with Will on this one. I'm just just a little bit because I remember when Marvel announced their Phase Three plans, and I remember I was so excited at each announcement, and then they announced in Humans, and all my excitement left because I really I just don't care about this franchise. I'm I'm starting to care about it a little bit more, but I, I just don't really care about this kind of franchise. But this being on television now with what they're doing with IMAX, I think this is a game changer because I've never really seen this. This is one of the first, I think this is the first time this has ever been done where this it's being first episodes filmed in IMAX and then going to TV. That's a game changing move. And that's really, really cool. And that you get to go to the theaters, you get to see this giant thing on the big screen and then you get to go home and watch on the small screen as well. So that's a very cool thing. The mm-hmm. interesting thing about this, and I, I want to hear you guys' thoughts as well, um, about this isn't this is not a spinoff of it. This is not a spinoff of Agents of Shield, and this does not also interrupt the flow of the films. So the the Inhumans film can still happen. The, this is just its own its own thing at the moment. So, but I'm I'm still interested to see how this moves on. I might clutter some things but i'm still interested to see how this moves on who is the showrunner who plays black ball in the royal family can they bring medusa to life and can they bring lockjaw to life so uh which is a giant dog for you guys don't know he's like a dog <laughs> the size of a couch so um yeah but i'm excited i think like i said i think this is a game-changing move and i, I really want to see how where they go from this from now, here. now, do we have do we have confirmation that they actually are going to use Black Bolt and Medusa yes. in the the royal family? Yes, this is about Black. Series? Yeah, this is yeah, this is about Black Bolt and his family. Hmm. Okay, because that was one thing that kind of um, I felt, especially since they're still saying that the Inhumans movie could and probably will still happen. Mm-hmm. I figured that they'd save the actual Inhumans characters for the film. And I kind of felt like maybe this was just going to be a bunch of random fake mutants, kind of like what they use on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And that is really where I had no interest in it, because I honestly, that, that, that was the vibe that I was getting from it. Mm. But if it's actually using Black Bolt and Medusa and the, the actual Inhumans characters, my interest might be a little bit more peaked. But again, outside of what they're doing on Netflix, which is completely underrated, under the unrelated to what they're doing on networks. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't feel like Marvel has been, you know, really doing very good on, on their television stuff. Um, I'm not a big fan of agent shield, even though the ghost writer thing, uh, this season got me interested. I still haven't seen a a single episode past the first episode of the season. Um, (laughs) Everyone was so hyped for that for Ghost Rider on Agents of Shield and after the first episode, no one gave a shit. And it was a really good it was a really yeah. good episode. Yeah. It was a really good episode. But yeah, they've they've spent three years making you not give a shit about Agents of Shield, and so it's hard to get back into that groove to mm-hmm. where you actually care about it. Uh, Agent Carter wasn't great. Um, so yeah, I mean I just I just don't know that their track track their track record on network television bodes well for this but 
again, we'll see it in IMAX and we'll, we'll make our judgment from there. Yeah. Me personally, I, I, I had no interest in really, I had really had no interest in, uh, the Inhumans movie unless Vin Diesel was going to play back Black Bolt. But, um, I think it would work better as a show, honestly. But I mean, we'll we'll see. I'm re- really, really excited for the IMAX thing. I'm definitely going to be seeing it in IMAX. Does anyone know they're not filming in IMAX? Are no, they they're filming both. Uh, both two episodes will be funded by IMAX, and both two episodes will be filmed in IMAX. And Actually, there's also going to be sequences. The the action sequences will also be filmed in IMAX, and some of the action sequences will be set on the moon. Which, if you know anything about the Inhumans. If you know anything about the Inhumans, the Inhumans come are they're they're on the moon. So, oh, well, that just piqued my excitement. Um, <laughs> well, anyways, but yeah, I mean, now I'm pretty excited. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'll definitely be seeing it. And if the first two episodes are good, I'll keep watching. Um, anyways, we're going to move on. In uh, Star Wars news, Amelia Clark has joined the Han Solo spinoff movie. Uh, with whatever Alton, whatever his name is, and um, <laughs> and, and uh, Donald Glover, and she's going to be playing the female lead. What character she's playing, I don't know, but I do think she will be playing Princess Leia. But we'll get to that later. Huh. Um, but yeah, there's actually been a bit of controversy over this. This kind of somewhat debunks my. Uh, Leia theory, if this is actually correct, and the guy from Variety is right, but uh, apparently Tessa Thompson was also in the running to play the role of whoever she's playing, and they chose Amelia Clark over her, and a lot of people have been like, been calling whitewashing and shit like mm. that. So, uh, what, what are you guys' thoughts, uh, Tisha? What are your thoughts on Amelia Clark being in the Han Solo spinoff movie? Um, I'm excited about a Han Solo spinoff movie, honestly. Han Solo is one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars universe, although Luke is always my favorite. Love Mark Hamill. And, um, but, um, I think that if they make, uh, someone who, uh, be, you know, a, a, lo- a young Princess Leia, that would be interesting, but I, I don't know how that would be feasible, honestly. Um... It just doesn't make sense with the timelines. No, I know. But, I mean, she doesn't necessarily... She could be... Ugh. It could work in, in a way, but I, I don't know. I just think... I don't know. I, I don't she think looks that a lot like a young. She looks a lot like a young Carrie Fisher, so that's where I got uh-huh. that from. Kind of-ish. <laughs> just... <laughs> Miller agree with me. They I both don't, have, I they both have brown hair. They both right, have brown, brown hair. hair. That's like about, it. yeah. You're not your theory. That. Yes, yeah. you did. You did too. Anyways, go ahead. Wait, your theory? No, I think your theory um, uh, They both have brown hair. Yeah, that's about the extent. Because I, I, I remember. Yeah, she was. I see. Yeah, I see it. But I, I don't see, see it. But uh, but then I, 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 um, but I like I, 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 she could pull it off though. She could pull off the attitude of a young Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Because Carrie Fisher had some bitchiness to her when she was younger. She still does. She's still pretty freaking awesome. But uh. You know, um, got that sass going on, but, um, you know, I, 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 I just, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what she can do. She's always been an interesting actress. I, I like her. I like her look. So I, I could see her being really good and I'm excited for the whole cast. I'm, you know, I want to see, uh, the past explored. I'm someone who doesn't mind going back and like knowing what happened before the adventure before, you know uh everything um and i'm i'm interested in who they get to be chewy <laughs> but um that's just me but well uh peter mayhew peter mayhew really was only in the chewbacca costume and the force awakens for scenes where he was sitting down <laughs> uh so they already had a body double for chewbacca and the force awakens so they'll probably okay. bring back that same uh, that same actor to puppeteer the suit. Unless Amelia Clark is playing Chewbacca. Yeah, unless she's <laughs> playing Chewbacca. Oh, God. Oh, man. Well, that was young Peter Mayhew, so I'll... <laughs> they, they, have, they have brown hair as well, so... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the brown hair. <laughs> Anyways... Looks totally uh... alike. <laughs> 
Hey, Miller agrees with me, so Miller agrees with me. I don't me, see so it, and I love me I some uh, it, yeah. Carrie Fisher. She looks like her mom. That's who she looks like. Carrie Fisher looks like her mom. Anyways, back to the news. Darren, what do you think? Um, I think this is... Look, I have a bit of a crush on Amelia Clark. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Very beautiful woman. But, um, yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm excited that she's being added to a movie that I could care less about. Um... <laughs> Chisha, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a, I don't like when you go back. I don't need to see Han Solo's. I don't need to see the Kessel Run. I don't need to see any of that shit. Just like you can just, I wish they made a movie about a new character, but they're making this Han Solo movie and they do have a good, good cast and good directors behind it. So it's oh, going to happen. Yeah. And it has Donald Glover. It's going to happen. But um, with what I'm not going to address something that um, Dylan said about the casting. I think she was cast as a different character because the way canon works and the, like everything that is made now in Star Wars is canon mm -hmm. and they have a very good story department behind that. So everything makes sense. They haven't really made any uh, missteps so far, just like we've seen in Rogue One coming up. A character from the Clone Wars is being uh, portrayed in live action by Forrest Whitaker and the character that uh, Dylan is talking about, she's a black character and um, she's Sansa Solo, and she was a wife to Han Solo or something. They never actually got married, but you know they're just they were together. And when she shows up, she just she was just like, "Hey, I was your wife." And Leia's like, "What?" But um, yeah. they kind of go into that in the comic book. So I still think Tessa Thompson, or they either switched characters, or that role can still be filled, or that role is thrown out the window. Who knows? But I don't I don't think this is a case of whitewashing at all. I think this is just another character that. Amelia was selected to play. Um, I think it's kind of funny that Lucasfilm kind of has their each one of their female leads just like a brunette. So I kind of hope they would switch that up eventually because then you can have people stop acting like, why does she look like Ray? But yeah, I mean, yeah, are I mean, they related? It's, is it yeah, exactly is she actually related to this person? Like, oh, yeah. I'm so sick of the Ray who's Ray's parentage. We'll find yeah. out when we find out, okay, people. Well, yeah. not only that, not only that, but Ray doesn't have to be related to anybody uh, special. No. You know, uh, yeah. everybody's stuck on this whole, well, Star Wars is about the Skywalkers. Yeah, you have Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren is a Skywalker. Get over it. Let yeah. it go. And technically, and Ray he does isn't. Not... He's a solo. <laughs> no, he's a Skywalker on his mother's side. Yeah. I know, but like, I'm just, I'm just. I know, I know what you're saying, but like, I agree with, I agree with Will. Everyone always says, like, it's a Skywalker story. You have Luke Skywalker, you have Leia Skywalker, and you have Ben fucking Solo. There's your Skywalker story. So, not, you know, you don't need... Not only that, but if Luke Skywalker is Rey's father, then, uh, one, that's going to be the most anticlimactic reveal yeah. in cinematic history. But not only that, it makes Luke Skywalker literally like the worst person in the galaxy. Yeah, why like, would he abandon his kid? the worst kid. parent in the galaxy because... He left his daughter, he abandoned her on a desert planet with an unscrupulous junker who basically <laughs> uses her for slave labor and barely pays her enough food to survive, and then just went off. I, I mean, here's the I thing. Highly okay. doubt, I, anyways, I highly doubt that Luke is raised father. Yeah, I, I highly doubt it too, but you can't convince any of these people they're fucking retarded. But anyway. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see in the movie, but I also wanted to say one more thing. I don't think if she's playing Layla, 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 not Leah. Oh my crossing. God, what is happening? Leia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, oh my God. Leia. Um, yeah, I'd hope she's not playing Leia. That's like yeah. I could see if this was a different movie. Sure, why not? But like they do not meet until they meet, and yeah, I don't want don't like why would you have a character in there that you don't meet that Han Solo does not meet. So I don't, I just, I don't want that at all. Just no. Right, exactly. So no that was and, and that, that's what I was going to say too. I mean, for me, that completely dismisses any chance of her being Leia because uh, she clearly meets Han Solo for the first time in A New Hope. She clearly meets Lando Calris for the first time in The Empire Strikes Back. So you're going to have a female lead that does not at all interact with your two male leads. That's just, yeah. that's not how movies work. So... Yeah, I don't think she's going to be Leia. I think she's going to be a new original character. And I'm really getting sick and tired of all these people trying to tie everything back to, you know, the old movies. That Not everything has to tie back. 
I hope yeah, it's a good villain. People. It's a big galaxy far, far away. Big. I just, I just really want to. I think she would be fucking perfect for a young Leia. So I just, I would really like to see that. But, but I, it wouldn't make any anyways, sense. Anyways. It wouldn't make I, sense. She looks like Leia. Okay, that's <laughs> it doesn't just, matter. Oh, she doesn't. I'm fucking thinking of canon or Completely anything. She was cast. Eyes. I was like, oh, Leia. She already got, got to play. She already, already got, got to play a young Linda Hamilton. She did a good job, even even though the movie was shit. She did really do a good job as Sarah Connor, even though the movie was horrible. So she's already gotten to be a young, iconic character. She doesn't need to be Princess Leia. Let her be a new original character, a new she's original free Leia love interest. She's good at playing queens and princesses. That is, that is a good point. That is a good point. Maybe she's a different princess. There's a or lot. Maybe of- she's Chewbacca. Uh, well, yeah, maybe she's Chewbacca. Driving that theory to the bank. But I just yeah, really yeah, want you know, like, to see. I think she's Chewbacca. <laughs> I just really want to see Amelia Clark in something else because she hasn't really impressed me in anything but Game of Thrones. So uh, mm. I really want to see her in this, and I hope that she really impresses me. Um, anyways, yeah. Mira, what do you think? I haven't gotten your thoughts yet. So uh, cool. I'm just yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see Amelia Clark in more stuff because I like her, but I don't really have that much to say on it. Okay, I will. You basically already stated your opinion, so whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's I see. don't care. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Best news of the night. Okay, we got a Cars 3 teaser trailer this morning, man. It's going to be the best movie of 2017. So Darren, what, do you, what did you think of the Cars 3 teaser trailer? Okay, um, I was sitting at home, and Miller sent me this, and I was just like, oh, okay. And the trailer, it's, it starts out, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty invested. And then Lightning Queen crashes, and I was like, Queen. Lightning McQueen, he fucking crashes, and I'm not going to lie, I was just like, <gasps> I, I was really invested into this. This is a really mm-hmm. good trailer. Like, this is a great trailer. I, um, I like Cars 1, Cars 2 can go burn in hell, but this movie... It looks very good, and it looks like they're going in a very different direction. I could have done without the whole entire everything changes. Like, that That was kind of stupid. You could have <laughs> just had the logo come up, but I can't wait for... I mean, this the darker color palette, the... I, I don't need every movie... I don't need, like, Pixar to go down, like, like, a dark and gritty path or something, but this just looks very, very good and very, very promising, so... Yeah, I, I can't wait for it. Okay, Miller? I'm in the same boat with Darren. Um, it yeah, it's sort of like a Logan situation for me because I didn't care about this movie at all. Now I'm interested, so let's see what happens. Okay, Tisha. Um. <clears throat> well, okay. So I didn't like the second Star uh, Cars. Um, I thought the first one was okay. It was obviously not geared towards me. Um. But I, I thought it was decent. It had some funny moments and some sweet moments. <sighs> this trailer, and I actually got a little excited. Because I was like, did they have the balls to fucking kill a Lightning McQueen in a race? Like, that's something that's, like, one of the biggest, scariest things that you can imagine for a, a, a race car driver. Even not not even one who's a, not the physical car, but like a physical NASCAR driver, like, you know, is to be killed in a car crash, and um, and I'm like, oh man, did they kill him? Like, that would be so intense, and how everybody would have to deal with that, and just like a look at that from like a, a car perspective and everything. And then I look at the synopsis, and it's like. He has to deal with the traumatization or whatever of, like, coming back from a horrific accident. It's like, no! Come on, are you going to do that? Kill him off! Like... Fuck. They're not going to kill him off, like you said. No, but if you're going to, like, if you're going to freaking... And, like, it's the motif is all dark. It actually almost looks live action, how it's shot and how it looks. Like, the, the computer generation almost looks real in this. And I was like, man, you know, like, they could really make this, like, legit. And no, they're just going to be like, oh, he has a boo-boo. It's okay. Kiss it. Make it better. That's like, a hell of a boo-boo. My God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the 
that's what I'm, but that's like that Disney. That's like how it works a lot of the time, you know? It's like, no, know. go for the yeah, The like, main character of the franchise just <laughs> flew through the fucking air. <laughs> exactly and he's fine like he's, he's like gonna go back and like ha- probably have some ptsd or something and like <gasps> that's not you're not okay from that. <laughs> like, that's, that's not recovery oh oh you just have pds ptsd you're no i didn't mean that that's like that that is a very serious thing i'm not that i am not trying to illegitimize that that's a very serious thing do not take words oh no put, no I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to switch um, I'm trying to explain myself, but you guys keep going, what? What? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so, and anyway, my opinion, though, is I think that it looks intriguing. I think that the car with the heart on their butt is the car that he's going to end up, like, mentoring like Hudson did, because there was something about that in the synopsis. And, you know, I am, as long as it doesn't have mater at the front i'm fine with it because <laughs> that was annoying that was straight up annoying um i i will probably see it i don't know if i'll see it in theaters but i am intrigued and i think if they make it look more realistic and everything because it really did the trailer i felt looked like i was actually watching a race not just looking at these computer generated cars racing and that's something that they haven't done in the past. And I think if they do that, that it could make it even more intense and even more, like, horrific. Which, you know, you guys are like, don't do that. It's a kid's film. And it's, it's a Disney. And I'm like, go for it. Disney's gone dark before. It can do it again. Okay? So, I I like it. <laughs> if, it if it goes the direction I think it is, I want it to, I want it to keep on that path. With Lightning McQueen dead in the first five minutes. <laughs> oh, I don't mean like... <laughs> you guys are terrible. Okay, Will, what did you but think? I thought they did, though. Like, it looked like he was... Anyway, go ahead. Will? Yeah, I I, I don't care. Um, <laughs> my kids will probably see this movie. I may or may not take them. Um, but, yeah, I... Just drop them off I, I have no have fun. <laughs> The, the first cars, the first cars was okay. It wasn't one of my favorite Pixar movies by any stretch of the imagination. Um, cars two was way over politicized, and seems to be the general consensus, at least in this group, that it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just I, I have no interest. Uh, I'm too old. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> hey, Dad, can we go see care. Cars three? No. Fuck no. <laughs> They should have seen us a Cars I, 3 and they still haven't released Incredibles 2. That's what I'm mad about. That is Give me Spider-Man. Incredibles 2. Give Honestly, me the Incredibles I, I love Toy Story. Um, I love Toy Story 2. I still have never seen Toy Story 3 because I just. <gasps> Toy Story 3 oh, is the best Toy Story. To see it. It's the best and, one. And I've, heard, and I've heard that, but I just. By the time 3 came out, I was just too old to care, so. You can never no, be too it'll old make to you feel like a kid story. again. Seriously, it really will. It made me feel like a kid again. Inside Out. Inside Out is my favorite Pixar movie. Oh my gosh! My Inside, Inside Out is overrated. But Inside Out is good. Fuck you, know it. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, score, that my kids like that too, but I've never seen it. So. Oh, Fucking Bing wait. Bong almost made me cry. Oh, Bing, oh, Bing Bong! Don't get me started on Bing Bong. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> now I get to give my thoughts. Stop it! Holy shit! I. I had no interest in Cars 3 to begin with. I did, did, As everyone has said, the first one was okay. I mean, I liked the first one. Though. I liked the first okay. one, too. Yeah, the first... Uh, uh, I, I could watch it, but I wouldn't watch it, like, constantly. I and I like all the things a lot. I'm not, not towards... I, mean, I was saying I don't fucking care towards you. <laughs> 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 I feel so loved today, guys. Jeez. I was talking about Cars 2. I was trying to talk about Cars 2. Sure, you were talking about and I didn't want to keep talking while you were talking. You guys talk over me all the time. Whatever. Oh my god. That's because you're just a girl. <laughs> you had to oh How god. dare you be so sexist? Bro. How dare you? <laughs> Dylan, continue. What do you mean, how dare I? That's like Dylan. an essential part of my character. Dylan. That's been established. <laughs> Dylan, keep going. Dylan, Anyways, go I don't fucking care about Cars 2. It's just whatever. I... 
I saw it when I was like eight years, eight, <laughs> seven or eight years old. I don't fucking remember it and I don't really care anymore. Um, I saw this trailer and I couldn't help but fucking laugh. Oh my God. <laughs> Jeez. That's looks, so, you thought I was me, you know, my gosh. It looks so over dramatic and just it's, <laughs> no like fucking Cars 3 Batman v Superman edition. <laughs> I I was expecting fucking Bruce Wayne to say something about a beautiful lie and diamonds and shit or something. Then Lightning uh, Queen's parents being murdered. Marcia. <laughs> Martha, not Marsha. This isn't the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Martha. Whatever. It could be Marsha in that. I guess I'm mad with that shit swerving it's... off the road and Dylan disposed <laughs> <laughs> Martha. <sighs> and then they did the whole thing with everything you know will change or some shit. Oh, I know. That's so stupid. stupid. And I will tell you this, though. If Zack Snyder ever directed a Pixar movie, I'd be all over it. Holy fucking shit. Can you imagine that? <laughs> it's, called, it's called The Guardians of Gahul. <laughs> it wasn't a Pixar movie, though. I know, I know, I know. But anyways, but the Cars 3, yeah, it looks shit to me. I don't fucking care. It looks overdramatic. It looks fucking stupid. It looks like they're copy, trying to copy Zack Snyder. I'm kidding. Don't crucify me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I already got the nails. <laughs> Terrible. I, just, I I have absolutely no interest whatsoever. But now let me tell you what would have my interest if if this movie was what I thought. If this movie was what I think it should be, I would I would have a lot of interest in it. Now let me tell you. Okay, <laughs> so we open up with we open up. Fuck, I can't. Really, <laughs> I call it Cars 3 Walk the Line Edition, okay? Mm -hmm. Lightning McQueen is a superstar, okay? He's a superstar. He's loved worldwide, Mm -hmm. okay? And then he cheats on his wife, okay? The the silver car, the silver car from the first one. He cheats on his wife, and then he divorces his wife and starts fucking those girls that were flashing their headlights in the first movie, okay? (laughs) And then... He, and then he gets addicted to cocaine and heroin, and he can't race anymore, and this is what causes the crash. He's just, high on cocaine stop. and heroin. Just please just stop. <laughs> Give this movie to me now. And, and he oh. fucking tumbles, and he fucking dies. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then and then Tomater has to take over the movie and the rest of the movie. Is- oh! <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine John Lasseter pitching that to Pixar and they're just fucking horrified? <laughs> but I also have another another idea. Okay. Okay. Oh, Cars three. Cars three. Wolf of Wall Street edition. We open up with Lightning oh, Queen man. snorting cocaine out of a hooker's ass. <laughs> We're just obsessed with cocaine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, <laughs> That's it for the Lightning McQueen, the Wolf of Wall Street movie. Because I ain't going nowhere! (laughs) Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! (laughs) What have I done? Uh, (laughs) This is what the trip looks to me forever, because I'm only thinking about this. Oh my god. I can't handle this. He's taking too much. Okay, anyways, should we move on now? <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. I don't think we can move on after that. <laughs> Keep Not that bad. shit in. Keep that shit in. These kids need to know this. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> These kids need to know what a real Cars movie is. <laughs> So, um, we have our new intern in today. Um, his name's Dylan, and he's gonna, um, he has an idea for the, uh, the course. The course. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of it, everybody's fucking crying. <laughs> they just right, so you from the McQueen premises. is running guns across country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds incredible. Oh, yeah, give me that movie, too. <laughs> I can't handle this. Cars, 
car three, Walt four dogs. Border control. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. So the cars have taken over the world. Okay. We're talking cars three population control. <laughs> I mean, hasn't that already happened? I mean, where the yeah, fuck are There's no humans there. <laughs> They've already taken over the world. We're talking about the origin story. We're talking about how they did it, okay? Oh, okay. Oh, prequel. Gotcha. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, we're going to move on now. Um, the car story. Uh, okay, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, we never really gave a direct review or anything. We're just going to do a little kind of mini review on the Suicide Squad extended cut. Oh. <laughs> More boring than the original. Mm-hmm. I, I fucking, I, this, this is crazy. Okay, so I, I have my phone plugged in. I pick it up, somehow lift my leg over my charger, <laughs> drop my leg down, and my phone flips up and hits my foot. It, it hurt. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Aww, poor thing. That's your thoughts on the suicide? <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So, Will, what are you, just your quick thoughts on the Suicide Squad extended cut? Uh, more boring than the original. Actually made me care less about the movie. It went from mediocre to slow death. And it felt like, even though they added some Joker back into it, it felt like there was less Joker than before. Mm-hmm. Which I don't even see how it's possible. Okay. Like that's eleven mo- eleven minutes that completely ruined an otherwise very mediocre movie. Okay, Tisha. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I didn't like it. Um, I want my money back. <laughs> and, um. I, you know, I, I like Harley Quinn. I like, well, I like Harley Quinn and I like the Joker and I like the dynamic there. I wish that we'd gotten more of that. Like we were told we would get with the extended cut and everything, but we didn't. We got a, basically one extra scene of them and then about 10 seconds worth of scenes scattered throughout the film. If you want the extended cut, do not buy that film. Actually get the book version, the novelization of it, and it will have the scenes in it. Just letting everybody know before you waste your money. I didn't like it. I think that everybody got shorts, the shorthand of the stick on that end, and I am still bitter. Okay, <clears throat> Miller, what did you think? Oh, this could be fun. I thought, well, I never liked this movie. I always thought it was pretty awful. And I thought it did, uh, they add some good or some nice character moments that, I mean, it. I that that I mean yeah. that still doesn't really add anything to the movie because the movie's still pretty awful and it just seeing more Joker footage just made me realize more of how maybe maybe jo- Jared Leto was just, I know you like him Dylan that's fine but uh, maybe Jared Leto was just bad and it's just the more footage I see of him the more it just hurts his performance instead of helps it. Oh, I completely disagree with that. But that's okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Darren, what did you think? Um, Suicide Squad is a movie <clears throat> that I like less more than I watch it, and this one was pretty hard um, to watch. I look, I agree with pretty much everything Will said. Um, I do, I will defend the movie, the extended cut by saying I did like their attempts at actually adding in scenes. Yes, it was more of them walking, but like at least there was an attempt to add in character development. And I like that Harley Qu- that scene where Harley Quinn's picking their brains. Mm. I felt like I do know the squad a little bit more. And I do I feel like I know the squad a little bit more. So that there is benefit there. But like DC, unless you took out some some substantial shit from your movie, like you did with Batman v Superman, stop making your movies longer, please. Like stop making stop doing the whole entire well- Theatrical they, cut, then we're going to give you a longer version of this. It's just like, stop doing that. You they know, did just like, take out a lot, though. Like, there was, like, a whole Joker movie <clears throat> that they took out, basically. Yeah, yeah but, like, and if they were going to do this, if they were going to do an extended cut, they should have That's what they should have added. Exactly, yeah. But they would have looked like idiots, then, so they wouldn't have done that. Well, well, instead, they went with 11 minutes just to sell more Blu-ray copies mm-hmm. and it just made the movie worse. 
Yeah, because look, I mean, like, you know, I don't think Batman v Superman should be three hours, but you know what? When I watched the Ultimate Cut, I was just like, hey, they took out stuff that should have been put in. Yeah. But with Suicide Squad, I'm just like, why did you why did you make an extended cut? I mean, yeah, yeah. I like I said, attempts at character development, but it's just like that should have been in the movie in the first place. You just would have had like a two hour and eleven minute movie. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just yeah, like two and a half hour movies nowadays, and that's like the yeah. norm. So it's not a big deal if they would have released it like that in theaters. Yeah, and I feel like that helps your movie. But like, yeah, overall I agree with most of what Will said. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, stop just make better movies can't mm-hmm. wait for wonder woman I, oh no me either um well and here's the thing all right i think <laughs> that an extended cut slash director ever i think that's a good thing if it brings more to the film like batman v superman did this I don't think movie it was the director's cut well no it's not it the, the director's cut. cut but that's why i said director's cut slash extended cut whatever yeah. but um if it brings more substance to the film, you know, Daredevil, the director, and the Green Lantern extended cut, they're pointless. They make the movies worse. Stop doing that, Warner Brothers. I don't, I really don't know if it technically, I enjoyed this consider the extended cut consider, considerably less than I did the theatrical cut, but I don't know because they, they I do like the, <laughs> the the scene where Harley and Joker are on the street or whatever, even though I even though it's stupid that they cut out the part where he hits her, but whatever. Mm. Um I do like that scene and I do I, everything that involves the Joker that they added, I like. Everything else I don't like. But <clears throat> um I, I don't know. I still don't think this movie is awful and I still I think it's I don't think it's good, but I can still enjoy it because I mean unlike you guys, I am a very, very big Suicide Squad fan. Uh before even before the movies announced, I was reading the comic books. I was a really big fan and then I freaked the fuck out when I heard they were making a movie and I actually mm-hmm. loved this movie the first time I saw it. You can ask them I fucking fanboyed the shit. <laughs> fucking fanboy oh, crazy. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, the critics, this movie's fucking amazing. <laughs> and then I saw it a second time, and I was like, oh, it's really good. And then I saw it a third time, and I was like, oh, it's okay. And then I saw it a fourth yeah. time, and I was like, oh. I, I think then, that's the way it was for me, too. Like, I, I love Harley Quinn. Like, you can ask Will. I'm, like, obsessed with Harley Quinn, okay? So, you know, anything that has her in it, even if it's not, like, a Harley Quinn-eccentric uh, centered film, I'm like, Harley because she's needed to be part of you know film for a long time but you know even with the extended you know scenes and everything I didn't feel like we were getting the entirety of what could have been you know and I like I I mentioned before I don't like that she kept slipping in and out of the accent and I know that Harley doesn't always have the accent sometimes she slips out of it especially when she's not with the Joker but if you're going to do it mid-scene, then don't do it at all. Like, it's it just got distracting at some points. Whereas she'd be like, what you going to do? You're going to kill me, Mr. J? And then five seconds earlier, though, she was speaking normally. It doesn't make sense to do that, you know? And she can do the accent. She just did not do it well here. And I don't know who told her that was okay, but they shouldn't have let her do that. They should have been like, okay, you either are consistent about it and do it when you're in your crazy get-ups or don't do it at all. It was me. Just David Ayer being a shit director a couple in a few scenes for some reason. No, no, it was me. I, I snuck on set, but I, I didn't think Margo. <laughs> I didn't think Margo was actually going to do it, but you did it. <laughs> but I will. I will say this. Although I don't like the shitty trailer park editing, I really fucking like the first act of, the, of this movie. Same. I don't like the second and third act of it. It's fucking the second act is boring as shit. And then the third act is just super discombobulated, and it's just fucking everywhere, and you can't even fucking tell what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck, David Ayer. And totally I, rushed. Um, I, but I really like the first act of this movie. Uh, I the extended, as I said, the extended cut didn't really do anything for me except for the extended Joker scenes. I'm in the very, I'm in the vast minority. Uh, I really, really, really fucking love Jared Leto's Joker. Um, 
but it's, I don't know, it's Cinecut. I, I would, I might would watch the extended cut over the theatrical just because, uh, just because of those extended Joker scenes. But I will agree with Will though. For some reason, it did feel like there were it. Le- there was less Joker, and I don't know why, but it did feel like that. Maybe and then it was long. longer than eleven yeah. minutes. Like it felt like it dragged the film out even more than yeah. the film initially felt. But uh, anyways. Anyways, guys, that will do it for today's podcast. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like. And if you think this video should, make sure you comment and tell us why you think this video should. Don't forget to subscribe and go like us on Facebook at Cinema Squad. Go follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Cinema, un- at cinema underscore squad. And go visit our website, cinemasquad.com. Until next time, guys, I'm not very good at outros, so goodbye. See yeah. ya.